Hello, bonjour, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to another Facebook Live from Prep Doctors. Here at Prep Doctors, we're on the cusp of a new cycle of Canadian dental equivalency courses with our fundamental knowledge and clinical judgment courses starting very soon. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into Prep Doctors' approach to these two exams and what you can expect from our upcoming courses. My name is Othman Quick. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager here at Prep Doctors. And today I'm delighted to have with me again, our co-founder and Chief Learning Officer, Dr. Marwan Arez. Dr. Marwan, I know you and your team are tremendously busy right now, putting together the courses coming up very soon. So thank you so much for uh, spending time with us yeah. today. Thank you, Osman, for having me. Absolutely. Before we jump into the discussion, there are a few things to note. Firstly, uh, this session is being recorded live, and so you can rewatch it here on Facebook. We'll also be posting it on YouTube for you to share uh, with your friends and colleagues. Secondly, towards the end of this discussion, we will be taking live questions. So you can start asking your questions in the comment section of this post, or alternately, you can uh, send us direct messages on Facebook or on Instagram as well. So let's jump straight into the discussion, Dr. Marwan. And starting with AFK, um, maybe for those who are not that familiar with the equivalency process for AFK, what is the importance of uh, this first exam? So AFK actually is the most important exam of the equivalency process because it is technically the only exam that can put an end to your dental career in Canada if you don't manage it properly. So we all know the, the two ways that we can um, equivalent the international degree in Canada, the dental degree, which is the direct and the indirect. The uh, both of them rely on the AFK and you have only three attempts to exhaust. And if you are not successful, then you have no more uh, future in the dental um, field in Canada and you will have to reroute through, for example, the United States, which becomes more difficult and more financially demanding. So the AFK to me is the most important exam because it will give you the flexibility or it will give you that open door for you to, to proceed. Now, even though, for example, if you struggle with the subsequent steps in the uh, equivalency process, as long as you have secured uh, the pass in the AFK, you still have an alternative option. And this is why whenever I talk about this exam, I always advise people, please don't gamble with this exam. Make sure you you know what you're doing in your first step. Yeah, and so for uh, somebody who's just about to start this, uh, this process, what do you think are the general requirements in order to pass this exam? What do they need to put in? Okay, so they need to put in, actually they need to put in effort and time and they need to study. So uh, for example, to give you an example from our uh, past experiences with candidates that take the course with us, I find there is a general trend uh, when uh, approaching the AFK exam. So uh, candidates in general, they the first attempt, they gamble with it. A lot of them gamble with it. So they just look at the released questions the NDB posted online. They think by solving these questions, they can get through. They do the exam. They, they're surprised when they do the exam, then they don't succeed. So they say, okay, now I'm gonna study on my own. So they do their studying on their own. They started. They start to put in the effort, but it's not an organized. It's not a um, a directed effort, or not actually a a guided effort. Let's put it in that way. And second time also, some of them they struggle and they don't clear the exam. So they come to us with a one chance left. And when they come with that one chance left, the amount of stress they have to go through to clear that exam is a huge. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to educate people to make them aware that please don't do this. 
this is not as simple as you think it is. You need to put in the effort, you need to put in the time, you need to study, you need to understand concepts um, so that you, you can clear this exam successfully. Yeah, and uh, since we recently launched, um, you know, the different packages for our AFK course, one of the biggest questions that we've been asked um, is what is the difference between our full AFK course and our new uh, crash course, which okay. is available online? Okay, so the, the best way to put it is the crash course is to prevent the scenario I just described in the full course. It's not to replace the full course. We don't want to get people in the full course um, in, in their third attempt. I want to eliminate that uh, pattern. So the condensed course is um, a course that is structured online. It is an international course, so it can be broadcasted worldwide. The time was selected so that it suits uh, the majority of countries in the world. And it is pretty much to guide people and to focus on what we think is the most important uh, topics in dentistry. Now, of course, this is not going to be a comprehensive coverage, but it's going to be a focused coverage. And at the same time, it will direct people on how to com complement the condensed course with their own individual studying so that they can be successful in, in completing uh, this exam. Now, of course, this course is mainly targeting those who cannot, absolutely cannot attend the full course. Because some people, they have jobs back home, they are uh, working in their country, they don't have the luxury to come and sit here for the full course. So it's pretty much okay, if you absolutely cannot come to the full course, here you go, we have an option for you, so that you don't gamble. Okay, we want to guide you properly on how to uh, successfully complete this uh, exam. Although it's gonna require way more effort from their side in order to do this, but they will have the guidance and they will have also a focus on the, uh, what we speculate to be the most important topics um, in dentistry. And there is another objective of the condensed course. It's for people who have already taken a complete course a full course with us and before we used to have something called the review package so they come back for review lectures and they come back for um, mock exams and one of the things we noticed in the last course actually is when people joined in the review they found out they missed out on um, updates because we constantly update our material so they were like oh dr Mom, we missed on this so we tried to actually uh, bring them up to speed um, although although it is tough to guarantee that we will be able to take all of the updates and put it in the condensed course, but I will be utilizing the condensed course to include as many updates as possible so that for those who have already completed the full course with us, they can actually be brought up to speed with the condensed course before the mock exams. So it's, it pretty much has two objectives. Okay, um, and if we look at uh, back at the full course, we have made some some changes, some additions to that course um, with more weekly quizzes, uh, office hours with instructors, private forums. Um, talk to us about uh, some of the the updates to the course and, and what that means for students who are about to uh, start. Okay, so. Um... The mo I can summarize it in this way. I can say the most important, the changes that we have implemented is to achieve um, the main objective of monitoring and keeping the candidate um, on track and studying. We are going to be monitoring people and their performance, and we want to keep them on track. So to start with the, with the changes, for example, uh, increasing the number of quizzes, during the course so that they can study the topics. Um, and uh, we will talk at the end about the passing guarantee and how that can actually push people to study. Um, uh, we also have a com computer lab. We implemented a computer lab and our um, IT team have uh, designed two softwares for people. One is the prep test 
platform and one is the booking software for the computer lab. So what do we want to achieve with this course? So people are gonna be coming on site to attend the lectures, okay? Now, when people attend the lectures, we have people who get it from the first lecture. We have people who want to listen to the lecture again, for example. Um, and uh, we have people who have uh, circumstances, they missed one lecture, for example, okay? So I'll start with the computer lab. Uh, now people will have access to unlimited replays. So our computer lab is equipped with a large number of computers and our um, IT team, and thanks to them, they have been working really hard during uh, COVID. We have a software where they can book the slots on the computer without the front desk. So they can do it from the software and they can come and watch without having to check in with the front and so forth. So it's much easier. All they have to do is they use their prep ID to book the session and they can use their prep fob with the ID to access the, the computer lab and their computer is gonna be ready for them and they can replay, they can watch any lecture that they have missed or they wanna watch again as many times as they want. So the purpose of this is to improve the quality and for those who felt that they have missed on material during the lecture, they have a chance to watch it two, three and four times. So that's a, a very big change and I think is a very important change because it gives people the chance to improve their understanding and the retention of, of knowledge. Um, to, in order to actually achieve this, we have also created a prep test platform. So before pre-COVID, just to give you an idea, people used to come to the center in order to practice and to do our practice questions. Now we actually don't have to come here. So they just have to log into our uh, prep test platform. Uh, there's going to be practice questions for them to do on the prep test platform. And there's going to be timed quizzes that will be launched when, uh, when it's the suitable time. So they will be conducting quizzes on the platform and then they will come for the discussions. So to give you um, uh, a quick run through how the candidates is going to experience the course is they're going to come attend the live lecture. In the live lecture, we explain material and we solve questions with them. Then they will go home, they will study, they will have additional practice questions to practice with on the platform. Then they will have a quiz on that topic and they will come for a discussion. And if they want, they can watch the lectures as many times as they want. So these are uh, pretty much the features that we have implemented in the course. And um, hopefully this will uh, cover all of the feedback that we have got from our candidates. Some people, they say, well, we felt the lecture was a little bit fast. We need to watch it again. We want to write our notes slowly. So they will have the luxury to do that. Okay. So let's switch gears a little bit over to uh, ATJ and, and we'll definitely get back onto the, the prep test platform because I think that's a really exciting addition. But looking at ATJ, and uh, you know, we at Prep Doctors over the past 10 years have helped, we were looking at some of the numbers and it's over 1500 have passed the ACJ exam um, with, yeah. with Prep Doctors course. So with that being said, and looking at the nature of the exam, what is our you know, slightly reworked or, or, or different approach this time when it comes to, uh, to the ACJ course? Okay. So um, the ACJ course, actually, we have been, uh, so initially when we started teaching the ACJ, it was the straightforward um, lecture format, okay, like what's taught in universities. Then uh, in most universities, I would say, and then we have uh, switched our uh, teaching mechanism to problem-based learning, where people will learn from cases. And uh, we found that uh, some, um, some people preferred the problem-based learning. Some people preferred the straightforward lecture format. So we said, well, how about we combine both? So the first uh, change we have implemented in the ACJ is to give you an example, if we wanna teach uh, Perio. So there's gonna be a lecture on Perio, two lectures on Perio where the concepts, the material is being discussed. And then 
there's going to be a um, quiz on Perio, and the quiz is going to be pretty much re-emphasizing the entire topics in problem-based setting. So this way, the candidate will be exposed to the material twice, one from a straightforward approach where they learn the material, and then they see how it's being applied, and they learn it from a problem-based learning. And this is something I actually even forgot to mention in the AFK as a new feature. We are going to include office hours and QA sessions. So after each topic in ACJ, there's going to be a question answer session where people can post their questions on Facebook. They can come live to ask the instructor and their questions will be answered. Okay, so they will take the lecture. They are going to learn again the material from a problem-based learning and uh, then they have the luxury to actually ask and clear all of their doubts. So that's the first change that we have actually um, implemented um, in the ACJ. Uh, the second thing is, as I mentioned, the same platform, it's a ACJ platform, prep test ACJ platform. So people will have access to it, to do the uh, quizzes, to do the practice, and um, also to do the uh, mocks the, uh, that will be conducted throughout the course. So by the time people get to the actual mocks at the end of the, at the, end of the course, they would have at least completed two full mocks during the course on top of the four that are gonna be completed um, at the end of the course. Um, the other change that we have implemented is we have um, expanded our team in the ACJ. So we have now specialists on board that are going to be teaching uh, some of the topics. Uh, and they have been also, although they have been present in the past in the background, helping us in research, in reaching uh, correct judgment on controversial um, uh, matters. Now we actually have a specialist with us in the front. So they are going to be teaching uh, their topics and they are going to be approachable uh, by the uh, people. And this, uh, some of these people have cleared the SEJ recently. Some of them have cleared it in the past. So they also have that firsthand experience with the exam. Um, and hopefully that will uh, give people more perspective and a variety of people to talk to and to get their feedback on how to properly um, approach this exam. So we've increased our number uh, of hours across the board of the ECJ yeah. course, but uh, speaking specifically about radiology, what do you think is the importance of uh, the increase in the amount of practice time when it comes to radiology? Yeah, so radiology, actually, we increased the practice time and we increased also, uh, we, changed, we included a new approach on top of the, uh, what we used to teach before. So radiology is half, if not more, of the exam. And it is actually an area that requires a lot of training. So practice is important, but what we also have implemented this time in the course is a specialized section in radiology to distinguish between lesions of similar kind or that can uh, appear similarly on an X-ray, like for example, cervical burnout and caries, uh, uh, root resorption versus uh, cervical caries, stuff like that. So there is a special section that will only focus on things that appear similar on an X-ray with multiple examples in order to help train the eyes of the uh, doctors, of the trainees, so that they can recognize the difference by the end of the course with enough practice and explanation. And that will help them navigate through these uh, gray areas. So the practice time have doubled, if not more in the course, and plus we have included additional uh, techniques in order to tackle uh, radiology. And, and just coming back to um, the feature of prep test, which is something that, that's very new, very exciting. Uh, I was really excited when I, when I saw that IT yeah. brought that feature. Um, how will that benefit the instructor team? You, you know, your view of what's happening with the class and then how does that then benefit the candidates using okay. this platform? So this brings me to the first point I mentioned at the beginning of the session, which I talked about monitoring right monitoring people so prep so to give you an example when it's time for uh the first uh, practice session in acj the first uh, uh test they're gonna do so it's it's timed it will open let's say i'm just giving an example monday 9 a.m 
and it has a limited time window where they go in, they do the test and uh, from home, they don't have to come to the center. They log in with their IDs, they do the test. And every time they log into the platform to practice also and to do the test, this is all being logged. So, and we have a team actually that is following and monitoring how people are performing. And this is why we have also included in both AFK and ACJ for these cycles, a WhatsApp group and a Facebook group uh, where people can ask on Facebook and WhatsApp where people can be actually, they can express their concerns. They can uh, have them uh, addressed as quick as possible. So the candidate, as they are practicing, uh, they will be using the prep test platform. And we have a dedicated team that will be tracking each individual to see have they completed the practice? What have they scored in the practice? What have they scored in the test? Okay, and if someone is slacking, they're gonna get um, an email of reminder that you're actually not um, on top of your material. So I want to create an environment where the individual is actually feels being monitored. So they are in, because not everybody actually are self-motivated. A lot of people, they leave everything till last minute. We don't want people to leave things till last minute. We want them to study along. So they will be monitored throughout and they will get feedback throughout from our team, whether they are slacking, whether they are not performing well to see what we can do to actually improve their performance. And again, the computer lab is open for ACJ as well. It's not only for AFK. So in ACJ, if they feel, oh, okay, I'm missing out on something, I'm not getting this concept, they have the chance to come and replay the lectures and watch it as many times as they want. Okay, um, I'm looking at uh, some of the questions that we're, we're getting already on Facebook. Um, and one of the questions that many people are, are interested in finding out more about is our passing guarantee. Um, from your perspective, how do you think this, you know, uh, or, or maybe why? Like <laughs> the question is like, why, why do you think it's, okay. uh, it's a good idea? Yeah. Well, because I'm confident in our product and the goal of the passing guarantee is not to see them again. Okay, we want to see them once they pass and they go to the next uh, cycle. So that's the purpose of the passing guarantee. So the passing guarantee actually has requirements. And I think it's only fair. The requirements is, you attend 90% plus of our lectures. So you have to actually attend the lectures. That's number one. Number two, you have to attempt all of the quizzes and you have to be successful in 70% of the quizzes. And then you have to pass the mock exams. Okay, if someone achieved all of this, I will guarantee a pass. And if God forbid this doesn't happen, it's only fair they can come and take the course for free. But the whole purpose is, I don't want people to come back. Okay, I want people to clear it from the first time. But when people see this incentive, now they know they can't mess around. They actually have to score well. And they will study their material. Now, someone may say, well, the quizzes are online. I can cheat. It's an open book quiz, right? So I can open the book. Well, that's good. Because I want them to see how material comes from the notes and that will help to guide them how to study. So the whole purpose is I want people to focus on the material we give them. I want them to study the material we give them and to get rid of the habit of going on platforms on Facebook, on the, on the internet, to just do questions because people, all they want to do is just do questions, do questions without knowing the concept. I want to test people on the concept. So I want to push people to study and to be on top of the material in a timely fashion. Okay, great. Um, so we're just about to get into some of the questions that you guys are posting um, on our various channels. But if you would like to get more information about any of the stuff that we're talking about here, we will be posting links um, into the comment section of this live session. Okay. Um, you can go to our website as well and, uh, and, and check out more details on all of the courses. But let's jump into the Q&A. And a question that we get a lot on, on social media is, is your AFK full course useful for someone who has left dentistry practice a long time ago? Yes, of course. 
Well, that's the whole, the, the, the AFK full course is pretty much teaching four years of dentistry in six months. Okay, so the, the whole purpose of the AFK is we are providing you with the material. We are explaining the material for you. So you don't have to go and dig your old notes and look into books and stuff like that. So we're providing you with the material and the explanation and the practice. And we're telling you just please sit down and study and follow this guidance and it's gonna be enough. And then following on to that, there's another question that talks about somebody who has taken uh, our course previously, AFK, um, yeah. but, but not attempted uh, the exam yet. Uh, how, does, how do you think somebody knows whether they should take another full course, a crash course, you know, you know, what's, uh, how, how would they know? You know how would they know? It depends yeah. on their personality, right? It depends on their personality because some people, they come to me, they say, I can only study in a group. Like I feel when I attend the lectures, I keep refreshed and it, it, it motivates me to study and I keep um, with the updates. Now, other people, they, they are more self-learners, so they like to study by themselves. So if someone, to give you two examples, if someone is self-motivated, they know they're going to sit down and review the material constantly. And they're going to come, for example, they say to the condensed course for updates and to do the practice at the end. That's perfect, no problem. But the problem is I see with some people is in this gap, they slack off. And when they slack off, the AFK includes a, a huge amount of material. So you have to constantly keep refreshing and, and uh, reviewing. So what happens is they come after this connection. They feel that they're starting all over again. And now it's too late. It's close to the exam. So the best answer to that is if you are someone who can sit and keep track with the, uh, with the study, Sure, you can do it on your own. If you feel you need that help, uh, you can come to the full course. Some people also, um, some of the comments I used to get is they say, the second time we attend the full course, we feel we understand the lectures better the second time we, we listen to it, which is true because first time you pick up on the general guidelines, second time you start to pick up on the extra detail that is given in the lecture. So there is no harm in taking the uh, full course again. Uh, there is only benefit in that. But again, some people have financial constraints and so forth. So we understand the most important thing I uh, advise them to do is don't slack off. Keep on reviewing and keep motivating yourself if you are not coming back for the full course. And, and another question comes in that follows on to that as well. Um, and I think you addressed this a little bit previously, but the prep doctor's material that we give out to, um, to our trainees, is it enough or should people be looking outside, researching Facebook groups? It's enough. All of these. Yeah. I can say with confidence it is enough. Okay. So to give an example, if you ask me the question in a different way, if you say, does prep doctor material cover? 100% of the questions that will come in the exam, I will tell you no. There's no way. You cannot cover 100% of the questions that will come in the exam. There's always a few questions that will come from outside. But at the same time, the only way to cover all of these questions is to study and know by heart 120 textbooks that are listed on the NDEB website or whatever, or even additional uh, textbooks. That's the only way to cover it, and it's impossible. But when we speak to our clients, they say the majority, more than 90% of what actually comes in the exam comes straight from the concepts we teach in class. And after they do the exam, when they go back and they look through our notes, they find they come straight from the notes. The concepts are the same. The most important concepts are the same. So not only we guarantee we have we guarantee and we have had in the past passing in afk but we've had people who scored hundreds in consecutive cycles people score 100 okay standardized score which means that the material that they have been exposed to 
is enough. But the condition, Uthman, that I need to emphasize here is for people to know the material. They need to know the material, not read the material. And this is what we want to actually ensure by the quizzes that we do, because it will show the candidate, by the way. It will show the candidate. And the quizzes we bring are actually straight from the material. So when people answer it wrong, we show them the slide. We say, look, this is came straight from your notes. That means if you are not getting the quiz, if you're not passing the quiz, you have to re, uh, you have to look again into the way you are studying the material and improve. Okay. Um, there are some questions coming through about uh, the announcements that uh, the NDEV has made um, with Vision 2022. And, you know, the reduction of the amount of questions coming through. Yeah. Of course, we, we're speculating here, but, you know, are there any uh, adjustments that you've done to the course or anything that you foresee needs to change based on, based on that announcement? No, there's no, like we, I already talked about the adjustments I have done and uh, in the course we have done here at Prep Doctors, but uh, the thing people need to realize is when you have an exam of 200 versus 300, um, you have the, the, the error. If you make it one mistake, it's weighed more. You know, one mistake out of 300 is not the same weight as one mistake out of 200. And uh, I would hope at this point, people have realized that the behavior of just studying questions and looking at release and not studying concepts and material, um, they have realized that this doesn't work. People who went to the last AFK, they know that they need to study, they need to know the concept so that they can score well. Absolutely. Um, okay, just looking for another question. Um, when it comes to results, there's a question about, uh, will I be able to achieve a 95 plus in order to, uh, you know, get into a university for the DDS in Canada? Um, will they be able to achieve 95 plus? Will we have people yeah. who achieved 100? We get a lot of 90s in the AFK yeah. course, a lot of people score in the 90s. But the question is, will I be able to achieve 90 plus? It's combined effort. Uh, the effort from our part, we have maximized it, we put it to the maximum. Lectures, replays, tests, quizzes, following on people to study, everything. Now, are you studying? That's the second component, right? So it's the combined effort. So will you be able to achieve 90 plus? Of course. If the combined effort, if your effort and our effort is combined, yes, people will score above the 90s. And looking at those people or back at those people who, who achieved those 100% scores, I mean, how, how do you think that, would, that was achieved? Um, is well, it just it, about the amount of time that they put in or? Well, one of them, I believe, took the course twice, just to give some statistics. Uh, the amount of time, yeah, exactly. You brought, you brought a very important uh, uh, point here, Othman. The time, because sometimes some people, they come to me and they say, oh, I can't, stu I'm, I'm studying and it's not working. I tell them how many hours you're putting. And then it turns out to be someone who had recently had a newborn. They're babysitting most of the time at home. They have a lot of responsibilities. And that's a fact. A lot of people have responsibilities. So they're probably studying like maybe four or five hours a week, maximum. And when they're studying, I ask them, where are you studying? They say, oh, we're studying at home. So the child is running around while they're studying. So there's no focus even. So you, people need to understand that this is their future. So they have to make the arrangements so they can study and focus to achieve this 90 plus. But if they can't make this arrangement, then they need to respect the time and not to gamble. There is one candidate, she told me, I can't. I say, okay, then don't rush into it. Take your time and study the material slowly until you feel confident, then take the exam. But don't rush into it and you're having a, a newborn and you have a lot of responsibilities now because it's not gonna be luck. Like you're not gonna go in without knowing the material and you're gonna end up passing. You're gonna have a trauma of a failure 
and then you're gonna be depressed after the exam and you have to put more effort next time and you're gonna go in with more stress no point of that so respect that you have to put in enough time to study okay there's a question about acj and um someone is asking in this period you know before our actual course starts is there anything that somebody can be doing kind of you know to to build up to the course or any personal yeah see see AC, acj actually is uh is an exam that is different than AFK in a sense that the material that they need to study is actually way less than AFK, but the amount of logic and judgment that is needed is way more. Plus the gray areas in ACJ are way more than the AFK. There's a lot of areas where you have to actually navigate through sometimes conflicting evidence like you get two references with opposite views and you have to navigate through it and that's actually what our course here um, I'm, I'm going to address the question after i talk about just the nature for people to understand why acj is something that people feel challenging is so they're, they're saying what should we study so okay if i tell them go read the references if they read the references it's good it will give them that perspective so for example if i say for medical management review malamed and uh, little and phallus two references for medical management right now if they go and start reading them they will start to see conflicting numbers like guidelines that are not the same in those references and both of these textbooks are actually ndeb references now again if you want to look at perio perio for example um, there's a new classification that came out there's articles. I would recommend that people read the articles, have that background information. So in this time, people should be reading to have the background information. Read the articles, read the references. For example, that uh, I'm not saying read the entire textbook, but look for the chapters that are related to the clinical judgment to have that background information. When people read, they will come to a, a state of confusion sometimes because they will find references that will start to conflict with each other. And that's where they have to formulate a judgment. Plus there's gonna be the, the, the way the market is structured, people discuss with each other concepts. So that leads to even more confusion and more controversy. Now with the help of the specialists that we have on the team and with the help with consulting with the specialists from universities, like we have obtained the material from University of Western Ontario, there are sometimes it's a small piece of information, takes a lot of research to come to a final conclusion. Like to give you an example, in, in the new classification of perio, if a tooth has a, a M3 mobility, is very mobile due to a perio disease, would you count it with tooth loss or only after you extract it? And you will find opinions telling you, no, it's be, uh, after you extracted, you count it. But the truth, after we have done this in-depth research and spoke, spoke to specialists, no, actually it counts before even extraction because it is deemed to be extracted. So, and this is also in the article and we have references for that. So at the end of the day, what I advise people to do is read, read, get the knowledge. But when we come to the course, the way we actually conduct the course is, I will be presenting you with the conflicting references. Okay, I will be presenting you with the different opinions and we will come with a final decision together. There is a decision and there is an approach we follow here. There is a final answer to the, to the situation, but it is good to know the background so that you can establish a better judgment uh, for yourself. Okay, so coming back to AFK, there's uh, a question from what I assume is a, is a new candidate. Um, and about the course itself, are there any particular subjects that you suggest uh, you know, they focus on or, or are more challenging when preparing? No, the, 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 per, the, percentage, the percentage of questions from each subject is actually on the NDEB website. So you can see uh, what percentage will come from each topic. Now, if you ask me what would I start with, what's heavy and what's hard to study and easy to, to score in is pharma and pathology. 
pharmacology and pathology are two topics that are difficult to study because they're actually not a clinical in nature and they require a lot of memorization and so forth. But once you know it, it becomes easy to answer the questions that come in those disciplines versus the clinical topics like ortho and uh, prosto, for example, where it's easy to study. The clinical aspect is easy, but when you have these clinical scenarios in the exam, you will have to think and you need to have a in-depth understanding of the concepts to tackle those questions. But the percentage is already on the NDB website. They can check it out there. It tells you exactly what percent comes from pharma, what percent comes from ortho, what percent comes from perio. So that's already over there. Okay. And we follow, by the way, that percentage. We follow, we follow the percentage in our mock exams. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it um, from the questions. Is there anything else you wanted to address before we wrap up, Dr. Marwan? Uh, no, that's pretty much about it. I'm excited to be back on site, to be honest with you, to see the people face to face. Absolutely. Because with the yeah. online experience, it was hilarious. Sometimes I'll be giving the lecture, or I'll be watching Dr. Ibrahim uh, giving a mock discussion. You have people smoking shisha in the background. Some of them are sleeping, you know, on camera. So we lost that engagement so um, i'm hoping that people can when we come back on site the engagement is better and i enjoy more um that one-on-one -on -one, um, interaction the person and the human interaction that we have lost during covid so pretty excited uh to be back absolutely okay thank you so much dr marwan uh for all of the viewers out there um our courses are starting very soon to learn more we are putting uh, links into the comments of this live session, or you can go to prepdoctor.ca to learn more about our courses. Again, this is recorded. It will be available here on Facebook and on YouTube as well for you to watch back. But that's all for now. Uh, take care, everybody. Stay safe.